Trip, trip. Trip. Trip, come here, what's this? There's big dogs. Ow. There's small dogs. <coughs> Greedy dogs. No, stop it. And speedy dogs. Don't go! Don't go from here! Dogs you can't touch. Norman puts a stop to everything. And dogs that love too much. We can't do this every morning, can we? But no matter what the size or the problem... I know that I've done this to him. Graham Hall can fix them all. I'll take on any dog. Any size. Super, yeah, that's what we want, come on. Any problem? It's the start of a busy week for master dog trainer Graham Hall, and he's got a full case book. Heavy poor Teddy. Teddy, no. Teddy, 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 no. A guard dog whose full frontal assaults could cause serious damage. You could have me over and I'd break my hip. Two dogs at war... <laughs> ..whose feud is driving a family apart. If one of the dogs got seriously hurt, I think that would probably be pretty much an ultimatum. And Labradoodle Willow, who goes ballistic whenever her owner does housework. I find it very difficult to do the day-to-day -day sorts of things because doing them is so stressful. No! No! <laughs> Graham's first call is the Isle of Sheppey to help nightclub owners the Lazelles who, ever since being robbed 12 years ago, have kept a guard dog. Whilst they've had no problems with their previous protection, Teddy, their current security detail, is out of control. Launching himself at anyone or anything. Ted, stop. Stop, Teddy. Whilst Teddy's desperate to get to the cat... No. Teddy. 72-year-old Nan Sherry is his favourite target. Every time I knock on the door, I have to take a dash from the front door to the nearest settee. Teddy, calm down. Calm down now. And Teddy always leaves his mark. He bruises all my arms. Look. And sometimes he claws. And it bleeds. It's not just heavy poor Teddy's claws that Sherry's worried about. Ted! Teddy, no! Stop! And when he stands up, he's nearly as tall as me. Could have me over and I'd break my hip. And the chances of her sustaining serious injury are about to get bigger. Because after recently losing her husband, she's planning to move in to the family home. What I worry about Teddy with Mum moving in is the greeting. We've got to put up with that every day. I've got to move in. Well, it's a problem, isn't it, really? Yeah. yeah. yeah but Sherry's not the only one moving in. She comes with baggage. Her best friend, Bichon Cross, Bailey. Teddy, stop it! <laughs> And with heavyweight Teddy towering over Bailey, the little pooch is defenceless. He keeps bashing um, Bailey on top of his, of his, his head. head. <laughs> Bailey doesn't like it at all, and he That's starts uh, he growls, yeah. And then Teddy gets more aggressive. The biggest thing I'm worrying about is that Teddy will kill Bailey. If we don't get any help with Teddy, I do worry because it's. Definitely knocking Mum over. The two dogs not getting on. Him never listening to no. Doesn't know the word no. Teddy, no. Oh, so you don't take him down. So don't take no notice. You'll have to go and put him on a lead. See, this is what they don't do. Go and put him on a lead. Whilst the family may disagree on Teddy's training, one thing is clear. Without help, Nan could be forced to make a devastating decision. Rehome Bailey. If I got to get rid of Bailey, it would be dreadful. Well, it'd break my heart. Yeah. yeah. 
that it would have to be done because, well, I've got to have somewhere to live. So German Shepherds, of course, are, are you know famously big, powerful dogs. They're used by the police, the military. I'm particularly concerned this morning that this this might be quite an aggressive dog. I mean, I, I don't know what he's like with strangers. Um, he's clearly not had much training, or at least that's the impression I get. Um, is he is he going to be a nasty dog? Oi, no. He's got his hand full, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Shall we go in? Yeah. Come on, Ted. Moments later... Oh, he's bringing us a ball. Come here, what have we got? Oi. Teddy's back up in Graham's grill. Uh -huh. Yeah, he knows no boundaries, does he? One of us is going to give up. Yeah. And it ain't me. <laughs> so when he doesn't get what he wants... He paws people, does he? Yep. He greets everyone like that. Right. Especially yeah. my mum. And Graham doesn't have to wait long to see how Teddy likes to say hello to Nan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, Teddy. Oh, Teddy. 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 Come, come. Down. Come. Come. Teddy. Come. Teddy. Come. <laughs> this is OK. There you are. <laughs> Teddy. That's it. Oh, I see your problem. Yeah. And it can be worse, yeah. How much worse than that does it get? <laughs> well, if I come round the side, it will pin me up against the wall, which is, that's a little bit frightening. Yeah, I'll bet. But I understand you're going to be moving in, eh? Well, my husband died earlier in the year, ah. and the place is a little bit too big for me. You've obviously been through it this year, then? Yeah, quite a bit, yeah. Oh, it's been I a, see. Sort of not a good year. How do you feel about the prospect of walking in and being assaulted every time? Because these guys might always be here. Yeah, that's what I'm frightened of, if he knocked me back and I went back through that glass window out there. Yeah. yeah. With Sherry being even more concerned about little Bailey's safety than her own, Graham's asked to see how Teddy treats her number one companion. Oh, there Teddy. we go. <laughs> Teddy! 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 No! No! Teddy! Oh. Once... You've moved in. There's going to be times when you're here on your own with the two dogs. Yes. What's the prospect of that like? Well, I just want them to get on, cos I don't want to have to part with um, Bailey. And he's only four years old. Right. Yeah, break my heart to part with him. But I mean, I've got to come here. Having seen the threat that heavyweight Teddy poses to both Sherry and Bailey, Graham's under no illusion of the challenge ahead. I can't imagine how, you know, Sherry's going to cope at the moment. It's easy to see how he could put her in hospital. You know, frankly, it's dangerous for Bailey. I mean, he's a little dog. It, it's pretty obvious to see how he could get hurt. Sherry said, you know, I don't really want to have to give up Bailey. She's lost her husband. I don't want to lose a little dog as well. Still to come, Labradoodle Willow, who hates her owner doing the housework. Willow's in charge, really. Two warring dogs who could see a young couple evicted. We would have to leave. I wouldn't even know where we would really go. And will Gran be able to get through the front door in one piece? <laughs> Master dog trainer Graham Hall is on the Isle of Sheppey with the Lazell family and guard dog Teddy. Ah, uh, oi, no. Whose full frontal assaults on Gaynor's mum, 72-year-old widow Teddy. Sherry... Teddy, no! ..and her little dog, Bailey, are jeopardising her plans Teddy. to move in. Stop it! Having witnessed the problem... Teddy, Teddy down! Graham believes the family are making it worse. When Sherry walks Teddy. in the door, she comes in, screams and shouts a lot, shouts, come, 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 quite a lot, then rushes like a sprinter to the sofa. And, and all of that, frankly, is just revving him up. Now, while all this is going on, Trevor and Gain are really just fueling the fire because, you know, they're, they're, they're just shouting as well. It's just mayhem. Graham's solution is surprisingly simple. If everyone stays calm, so will Teddy. And if he does step out of line, he needs to know it's not on. The message needs to be, no, if you jump, no. Yeah? yeah. 
But if you calm down, yes, good yes. boy. But in order to help you, we're going to use something to block between you and him. Um, your handbag. Oh, yes. Yeah, Literally just go, no. Because what happens is you get to the door and you're really fizzy, right? So you're shouting calm in an excited way. Voice. If he goes mm, and comes back down, if he's got his paws on the ground, right, then we're going to praise him. Good, we'll make a start then. Don't worry, OK. Do you then. want to go outside until yeah, I let you yeah, know? All right. OK then. Teddy is an unknown quantity. We'll know how well this is going to go when we start to train. Will he listen? Will he back down? Or will he be more persistent than Sherry? That's possible. There's a lot to go wrong. With Gaynor and Trevor also primed to keep a lid on their excitement, will Teddy realise Nan's not playtime? <laughs> Hiya, come on in. With a calm atmosphere... Oh, good lad. ..and a bit of praise... Good boy. ..on the first go, Teddy keeps his paws firmly on the floor. And when no. he shows the slightest no. hint of excitement... No. ..Sherry knows no. exactly what to tell him. What's missing from this normal routine? I didn't um, say, here's Nanny. You didn't rev him up before... No. Sherry got here. And then when you walked through the door, door you, you were just a very different woman. Yeah. You were very <laughs> calm and like, don't you dare, young man. Yeah, and it, yeah. The look on your face was different. It may be a fluke, I don't know. To prove it's not a one-off, Graham decides to go again. Mm. Oh, who's this, then? Is it your nan? Hiya, come on in. This time, it's not Teddy who needs keeping in line. What are you meant to be doing when he's got his paws on the ground? Oh, good boy. There you good go. boy, well Teddy. Done. Good boy. Despite your lack of guidance, <laughs> he sorted himself out. So that, that proves that's he's impressive. learning. That's good. Good boy. Right. And he looks proud of himself. Yeah, he's, yes, like, yeah. he's like, oh, I've done it. <laughs> done I got it. that right, didn't I? I got that right. <laughs> yeah. did, did I get 10 out of 10? <laughs> What Graham's done with Teddy is, is just amazing. I couldn't believe that he would um, be so calm with me. Completely different dog to what he was this morning. Whilst Graham had a win by getting Sherry to change her behaviour, he knows she still can't move in unless he brings an end to Teddy bullying Bailey. But that is going to be a much bigger challenge. I'm not resting on my laurels because today I've asked a human to change her ways so that she could have an effect on another dog. And next time, I'm going to have to get a dog who I can't speak to to change his ways and change the ways of another dog that I can't speak to. I still haven't figured out how I'm going to do that exactly. Let's make no mistake, this is difficult. Whilst Graham comes up with a plan to deal with the heavyweight, his next appointment is a practically pint-sized feud, 70 miles away in Eastbourne which began after Charlie and his dog, Rocco, moved in with his girlfriend, Harrison's family. Rocco is my almost three-year-old chihuahua. Rocco lives in here with us. He's got his own bed under our bed. <laughs> he is the sweetest little dog. Me and Charlie, we live in um, the caravan um, in my parents' back garden, because at the minute we're saving up to actually get our own place and move out eventually. Harrison's parents are more than happy to help the young couple make their way in life. But there's a big problem. Rocco, no. Rocco hates her parents' beloved pug, Bilbo. And the feeling is mutual. They hate each other. They'll probably do it all day. When they're together, they will just fight. Rocco, come on. Rocco, Rocco. Oh, Their God. daily dog fights have made living in peace impossible. Enough, Nick. I'm really pleased we're not trying to watch a movie right now. <laughs> it's so vicious. Um, it's upsetting to see, it's upsetting to hear. <laughs> you just can't do th things normal. And if they get to each other, their scuffles are serious. 
I've put my hands in before and been bitten um, and ended up in the fracture clinic up at the hospital. <coughs> if, if they can do that to me, think what they could do to each other. With a shared garden, drastic measures are used to stop a turf war. When Rock is in the caravan, we have it green so that everyone in the house knows that they can let Bilbo out. But then when Rocco is outside, we turn it red so they know that not to let the dogs out. It works, but there have been mistakes. Human error. Yeah. It is stressful. Even though we have a system working, it's not, like, amazing. On constant guard, the parents are reaching breaking point. <laughs> if one of the dogs got seriously hurt, I think that would probably be pretty much an ultimatum. <laughs> An ultimatum which could put Harrison and Charlie's dreams to own their first home on hold. We would have to leave, um, whether that would be Charlie leaving with Rocco and then me staying here or me going with him. I wouldn't even know where we would really go. If he was to go without me, it'd be horrible. If they left, I'd be heartbroken, but I would understand. I suppose, in a way, it would be easier if they did make that decision themselves mm. rather than a situation arose where we had to make it for them. Pugs and Chihuahuas are obviously quite different breeds, but quite similar in a way. Very loyal to their owners, quite stubborn, and I just wonder if that similarity is what's caused them to bang heads. It's always really hard if you're working with two warring dogs because you only need one just to spark off just a bit and they're both up in the air again. With the dueling duo getting into a fight whenever they're in each other's space, Graham's keen to find out how the family are managing the problem. Oh, hello. Hello. Hello, Graham. Hello. Nice to meet you. Happy Bilbo. Nice Hi. to meet you. Hello. Hi. Do come in. Thank you very much. This way. Cheers. There's you guys here. There's Harrison and Charlie, isn't it, in yeah. the caravan? Yeah. Right, with, with, with Rocco, and it's almost like never the twain shall meet, is that? Yeah, is that right? it is, yeah. So he's got what the caravan and the garden, in effect. They can't right. share it at the same time, they have to share it at different times. Right, so you've got to ask permission to use your own garden these yeah. days. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can't just open the back door. Because they fight. Yeah, they fight. fight. Yeah, yeah. Very fiercely. Aggressively. Rather I've picked Bilbo up out of a fight, yeah. and Rocco's still been hanging here. Right. What effect of it is it having on you as a sort of family unit? Cause a lot of stress. Mm. I'll bet. Sounds like it. Yeah, yeah. It is. Uh, yeah, triple yeah. with tears and yeah. arguments, really? isn't it? But there's tension between myself, Charlie, yeah. Harrison, and my yeah. daughter and my wife, you know? There's something way out of balance when the two dogs are splitting up a family. It shouldn't be like that. You know, Harrison's mum and dad are being really patient, and I think they're getting towards the end of their tether. Before hearing Harrison and Charlie's side of the story, Graham's keen to see how the conflicting canines behave on their battleground. Good morning, caravan dwellers. Hi. Where's Rocco? Is he there? Yeah, he's yeah, here. He's ever so quiet. <laughs> Do you want to bring him out? Let's <laughs> yeah, see him. Sure. Hello, you're cute. I'll ask your mum and dad to bring, uh, bring Bilbo out. Do you want to go over that side of the garden? Yeah. Because I don't want to take any risks. Okay. All right, yeah. but I just want to see what's going on. But even before the dogs have set eyes on each other... Oh, scared. ..nerves are running high. <laughs> oh, it's instant, isn't it? And with good reason. How long does this go on for? It stays like this until we actually separate them and take them away from each right. other. Right, so you always separate them, really. Yep. You stay in there. You stay in there and, and you literally never allow them to meet. No. But this time, Graham wants them to stay in the same space for longer. And with the family not following the usual routine of separating the dogs... Oh. <laughs> he's grumbling, but he's gone he's quiet. He's just watching, yeah. To their surprise, the pair pipe down. So what's happening at the moment is every time the family see the dogs fight, which is every time they introduce them, they separate them. They leave them with the thought, we fight. What they don't do is wait until they're calmer and then take them away and leave them with the thought, we can be calm together, we can be friends. With Bilbo indoors, Graham can catch up with the young couple. Rocco's your dog, Charlie. Yep. And he's kind of like, he's the bad boy who's, um, who's spoiling it, isn't he? Yeah, it's quite a tight unit of a family. 
Mm. And now, yeah, Rocco's just thrown a wedge right between well, the... All of us, all yeah. Of us. Is, is that how you would describe it? Is it sort of driven a wedge between you? For me, I feel like I'm trying to sort of keep the peace of everything and everyone, yeah. and it gets on top of me, and then I'm like, and I start getting upset and sad and stressed, yeah. you know? What upsets you the most? That it's not going to be fixed, and then I'm going to have to figure out what we're going to do. Right. Like, is, is Charlie going to go and leave me here, or, like, mm. are we going to go together? Yeah, yeah. Um, just to be all, like, all together. It is affecting me quite a lot. Yeah, I can see that, bless you. So. OK, well, I'll, I'll do my very best. The truth is that I think you've kind of made it worse. You create a system where you've separated them and you've reinforced that they're enemies, yeah? You've put this massive barrier in the way, never this way in me, and you can never, ever fix that problem with the dogs if the barrier's in the way. It's never going to get any better. So in a, a sensible, careful, safe way, we've got to train them without the barriers, you know, teach them that they can be in the same space together. Yeah. When they were to go, they did quieten down. Hopefully, they'll learn yeah. and it'll be OK. Yeah. I am still a bit of a sceptic whether it, Graham can help because I think cause it, it almost feels like it's gone too far. Coming up, <laughs> Willow, a Labradoodle... Willow Lee! <laughs> ..who hates her house-proud owner doing a single chore. I find it very difficult to do the day-to-day -day sorts of things because doing them is so stressful. Can Graham put an end to Rocco and Bilbo's no. war? No. Go on, then, tell him. And can big boy Teddy be calm enough for Nan and Bailey to move in? No. No! Master dog trainer Graham Hall is in Eastbourne, helping a family that's been driven apart by their two warring dogs, Rocco and Bilbo. <laughs> who will attack each other if they're not separated. But Graham's discovered that keeping them apart is actually fueling their feud. And the only way to take the heat out and break this very vicious cycle is by giving these warring hounds quality time together. Oh. And it's this period of time that Graham wants to work on. The longer Rocco and Bilbo can be relaxed in each other's company, the more likely they are to become friends. The message here is, you can be in the same garden as him and be calm, it's fine. And I'm going to time you. Yep. yep. OK. And to help me time you, I've got a stopwatch. So if we want to measure progress, we can literally do it with seconds and minutes. Right. <laughs> And the stopwatch only starts when they're calm. Bring them in then, in you come. But the minute the dogs see each other, they want a dust up. This time, rather than being removed, they're told off. Go on then, tell them. No. No. Stop it. No. no. And when the shouting finally subsides. What should you be doing? Good okay, boy. Good boy. Praise good boy. for being placid. So he's not exactly a happy bunny, but he's. He's a lot calmer. <laughs> Meanwhile, I think it's fine. he's not bad, is he? The family may have got their dogs to pipe down at ten paces, but how long will Rocco and Bilbo keep the peace? I'm going to start the clock now. <laughs> right? And let's yeah. see how long we can keep it yeah. before they kick off. Just hours earlier, they'd only last seconds before a face-off. That's it. Good boy. We're already up to... We're just coming up to a minute and a half. What do you think? I mean, I'm surprised that Rocco's actually quiet. <laughs> After a two-minute ceasefire, Graham decides to up the ante. I want you both just to take one step forward so we're a little bit nearer. Yep. That's it. There we go. Come on in, Rocco. Come here. Good boy, watch him. Good boy, come on. Right, so I'm timing you again. With the dogs remaining relaxed in each other's company for more than three minutes, it's time to get up close and personal. When you're ready, take a step forward and I'll start counting when they come. Come on, Rocco. Come on. Come over here. But it's a step too far. <laughs> no. 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 No.
and the clocks reset. By keeping calm and staying put... Good boy. That's it. Good yeah, boy. Net. Five, four, three, two, one, ten minutes. Their persistence sets a new doggy record. Well done, everybody. Oh, Fantastic. Wow. That's great. The point is, of course, there's still work to do. You've done really well. Um, I mean, the difference from this morning is, well, remarkable, isn't it? Thanks so much. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. With the Testy 2 happy to call a truce, the family can do something they haven't done all year. Enjoy the garden together with their dogs. There's a happy family sat down in the, uh, in the garden having a cup of tea with two calm dogs at the sides. And, you know, just this morning, that was impossible. I didn't think we'd ever be able to have them together without barking. Mm. And we've achieved that yeah. in, a sh in a short amount of time. Yeah, we have. So... I feel like, yeah, we can definitely make this work. With Rocco and Bilbo on the road to reconciliation, Graham's heading 200 miles north to Nottingham to help a house-proud lady with some serious life laundry. With her children flying the nest, teacher Nikki decided to get Labradoodle Willow to enjoy all her creature comforts with. Though Nikki loves a tidy home, Get the washing line. There's one girl, very girl. major girl. problem. Willow hates her doing any housework. Willow, Willow. Willow, leave. Leave. Stop. 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 Oh, this is ridiculous for hanging out the washing, and I can't leave it out even to dry because otherwise Willow just barks all day long. Right. No matter what the chore, Willow's on the attack. The minute you touch these things, then she will chase at it, bark frantically, no. and just try and bite it. No. Willow, Willow. No. no. I find it very difficult to do the day-to-day -day sorts of things. Every household just thinks, but I've got five minutes. <laughs> Willow, no, no, stop it. No. <laughs> Terrified of it. Doing the chores in my house tend to get avoided for as long as possible because doing them is so stressful. Willow's in charge. Really? With seven-year-old Willow's very bad behaviour only getting worse, it's impossible for Nikki to lead a normal life. I just worry because it is gradually getting worse and worse. And I think, well, I've got already a complex list of things that she has a problem with. Um, and what next? I can't have this any longer, really. It's impacting too much on the way I conduct my life. Thankfully, help is on the way. So Labradoodle is a cross between a Labrador and a Poodle. So both working dogs, um, often used on hunts, so their job is to sort of spot a bird falling from the sky, perhaps, and, and go and pick it up. They're looking out for movement all the time. So I, I don't know if there's a clue there in what Willow's doing. Whilst Graham has his theories, solving the mystery of Willow's hatred of housework is something he can only do once he's seen the behaviour. Willow, stay. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. How are you? Thank you very much. You come this way. Willow, Willow, stay. You're nice. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> There's another side to Willow. What sort of things is she bad with, then? Vacuum cleaners. Uh-huh. Ironing boards. Washing lines, brooms. Right. And so it goes on. So anything to do with housework? Pretty much. Well, I'll tell you what, do you want to maybe get the hoover out? Let's have a look. Are you ready for this? Yeah, got it. Let's see. <laughs> Willow. 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 No. Stop. Stop. Leave. No. And she's still at it. 
now, even though you've stopped. It's, it's, I'm, I'm not stood with it, even. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's difficult. <laughs> I've seen dogs going for hoovers before, but that was really bad. I mean, she literally ripped bits off it. <laughs> so there's a big question in my mind about what's going on in Willow's head. You know, what, what, what's, what, what's she thinking? To find out, Graham's asked Nikki to show her what happens when Willow's at the height of her hatred, with her least favourite chores. <laughs> Willow, Willow, Willow. And whilst indoors, the ironing board is bad. Bad girl, bad girl, leave. Naughty girl, leave, Willow, leave. Outside, things are just as chaotic. Willow, leave, leave, Willow, leave. No, no. Stop, stop, stop. Willow, stop, leave. No, leave. I've seen dogs go for individual items, but I've never seen a dog go for everything quite so consistently. But I think that Willow is sometimes scared of these items. Um, moving things erratically, particularly, just triggers that instinct. And I think Nikki's getting herself into a bit of a state along with her dog. Why now do you need help after all this time? Because seven and a half years of one thing, then two things, then three things, and the list is just getting longer and longer because there's more and more things that I can't do because of how she might behave. So she's telling what you can do in your own house? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Having worked out that Willow's extreme sensitivity to movement is made worse when Nicky gets stressed and moves things too quickly for Willow's liking, Graham thinks he has the key. So what have we got? We've got a dog who is triggered by the movement of these things. She's getting herself into a frenzy. And you're getting yourself into I a do. frenzy. We can't convince her that all's well, everything's fine, if you're if I'm looking panicky. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I just wish you thought of it like that. Yeah, yeah, it's resonating. I can just see that that's exactly what's happening. Yeah, so we've got to slow things down, right? Stop when necessary and then move on. So what we're going to do is simplify things, because this could be potentially very complicated. So we've got to go back to basics and go, right, what behaviour do we want to reward? What behaviour do we want to discourage? How do we get the signals across to it in a nice, clear way without revving her up? And it's the movement that revs her up. To tackle Nikki's housework hell, Graham believes the answer lies in just slowing everything right down. So, in a way, it's like a game of musical statues, this. I'm going to bring something out that will make her react. When she does, it's going to be a question of stopping the movement, right, until she's calmed down. And then it's, OK, now we'll introduce a little bit more movement and we sort of up the ante. Right, let's pop that on. With Willow on a lead for extra control, if needed, the game of musical statues begins. What's going on, eh? What's going on? And just by slowing things right down... Good girl! She's a clever girl, that's super! ..and praising Willow for good behaviour, Graham can get on with the ironing. Hey, she's a clever girl, eh? Who's a good girl? Right. <laughs> Yay! There you go. OK, <laughs> cracked it. I think we have, yeah. So this is good. I think you should have a go. OK. Um, now, listen, I'm not expecting you to, to have a lead on her all the time, necessarily, but I think it worked for me, so let's start that way. Oh, I'm more than happy. A lead is progress. Yeah. More than happy. Is. Yeah, <laughs> great. With Graham wanting Nikki to focus all her energy on remaining calm, he gives her a helping hand by keeping hold of Willow. Good girl. Good girl, Willow. That's it. Good girl, Willow. That's very nice. Well done. That's it. If she does react... <laughs> no! A flick on the lead and a firm command. Good. Good girl. And with practice... Go. Stop. Stop. So... Right. Good girl. Good girl. By keeping her movement slow and sounding relaxed, the ironing board can finally come out without all hell breaking loose. So the lead now isn't doing anything at all physical. It's no. purely psychological. But with Willow free to roam, will she leave the ironing board well alone? Stop. No. 
that's good. That's a good girl. Well yeah, done. Clever girl, there you go. That's it. Good. Uh, uh, no. Wait for it, don't move it. That's fine. Super. Good girl. Put it away. Lovely. Well done, Willow. Well done, Willow. There you go. Clever girl. Good girl. There you good go. Girl. And to come. Yeah. Oh, good girl. <laughs> yeah. You are. And yeah, hey? You'll get the odd setback along the way, I'm sure, you know? Yeah. And she'll get it. You just need to remind her from here on in. After seven years of chaos, Willow's finally learning to lay off the housework. And if Nikki's able to keep calm too, she'll have a happy home once again. There's a massive change from first thing this morning. I will keep going at it. Because she's learned so much today. You get a dog because you want them to be a companion. We none of us get a dog to be more stressed. But that was the reality for Nikki. Um, but it's not now. So for me, that's a great result. Still to come. In Kent, Graham may have got bully boy Teddy to treat Grandma with a bit of respect. Good boy. But before she can safely move into the family home, Graham faces a far bigger challenge, getting Teddy to play nice with her beloved Bailey. Yeah. No! No! Before Graham's working week draws to a close, there's unfinished business in Kent with guard dog gently. Teddy. No, Teddy, gently! <laughs> If he can't stop this big boy from bullying Nan Sherry's little dog, Bailey, she won't be able to move in with the family. Teddy! 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 No! No! He needs to calm down as Teddy, and he needs to understand that you're not allowed to go batting other dogs on the head. That's not a nice thing to do. On his last visit, Graham showed them if they keep their cool, Teddy will too. Good boy. There you Good go. boy, well Teddy. Done. Good boy. Now he needs to translate this principle of keeping calm and carrying on to when Teddy and Bailey get together. Teddy really wants to get to Bailey and play, doesn't he? Yeah. Right? Mm, yeah. So yeah. we're going to make him getting nearer conditional on him being a good boy. Because how you were doing it before was you, you were just putting the two together and um, it was a big yeah. 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 So we're yeah. going to teach him if you're calm, you get to say hello. Yeah. Let's go get the dogs then. But as soon as Bailey appears, <laughs> Teddy's too revved up for playtime. And Trevor's attempts to keep him in check fall short. Down. So your voice needs to be a wee bit stronger with that no, because otherwise it's no, which is like, please no if you wouldn't mind, you know. <laughs> no. Wait for it. <laughs> no. No. No! Good boy. With Trevor getting the upper hand, Teddy changes tack. No! That's it. And is still not calm enough to play. No. It, yeah. That's it. No! No! Don't get frustrated. When Trevor finally regains control and Teddy's chilled out, he's allowed to approach Bailey. But will Teddy play nicely? But if he lifts his paw to go and splat him, he's blown it. Good boy, that's nice. That's nice. Good boy, that's how you Good do boy. it. Good boys. Can't believe it. And he hasn't lifted his paws at no. all. He's like a totally different dog now. Yeah. He is, isn't he? Yeah. He is. Good. Yeah. You're doing well. Yeah. There may be progress with the two dogs, but before it can be truly safe for Nan to move in, Graham also wants to put a stop to the chaos around the cat. Stop! No, Teddy. Something they've always made a right old song and dance about. The more they twirl, the more excited Teddy gets. Teddy, stop it! So Graham must find a way to keep a feline calm around a canine foe. What Teddy needs to understand regarding Tigger is that is that you're not to play with Tigger. He's not your toy. So there's a time to play and there's a time not to. I I'm under no illusion that this is the biggest challenge, really, getting a dog to get used to a cat. Which way will it go? I don't know. It's one of those. 
Before he can leave, he needs everyone, man, woman and beast, all to relax in the living room. Right. Well, let's, let's go for it, shall we? Yeah. So... Right. I dare say he has noticed me pick the cat up. Yeah. Step one. Transporting Tigger without a tear-up. And when Teddy gets testy... No. Oh, well done. A no nips it in the bud. No. With Trevor keeping his dance moves to a minimum... Uh, no. no. Teddy stays calm. And then the unthinkable happens. Well done. And he's just begun to go, oh, OK. He's just put his chin on my leg now. Oh, look, that's oh. lovely. <laughs> How's that feel? Good boy, weird. Teddy. Weird. Nice weird. Good boy. Yeah, nice weird. <laughs> that is amazing. Boy. Yeah. It's been an incredible journey, but by sticking with the simple mantra, if you keep calm and carry on, your pets are sure to follow. And finally, it's safe for Sherry to make this her new home. Well, That's fun, isn't mm -hmm. it? how did you manage that? Are you looking forward to moving in? Yeah, I am now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It'll be nice. All sorted. So <laughs> calm down. Now we just as long as we all get on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was really worried about Mum moving in. I didn't think Teddy would come this far in just a couple of days. Really, really pleased, really surprised. So as I drive away here today, what I'm leaving behind is, is, is a really happy, calm, safe house. And it's absolutely a house that Sherry can now move into. If she told me she had to move in tomorrow, I'd say that's entirely possible and that didn't look at all possible when I first came. In Nottingham, Nicky's doing well, finding it much easier to get on with the chores. She's particularly made good progress with uh, the vacuum cleaner and the ironing board. So, yeah, on the whole, she's doing really, really well. In Eastbourne, Rocco and Bilbo are making progress. Hi, Graham. As you can see, we're still doing our training with Bilbo and Rocco. They're less aggressive. It doesn't take as long for us to get them to be quiet and in the same space as each other. And on the Isle of Sheppey, Sherry is about to move in. Teddy and Bailey are much better, much, much less excitable. Uh, Tigger is a lot better, but we're still working on that one. If you think your badly behaved dog could do with Graham's help, then why not get in touch? Details can be found at www.channel5.com forward slash get involved.